Welcome back, Alliance family. Today is day 27 out of 40 days of decrease, a different kind of hunger, a different kind of fast. And it's my prayer that each of these daily devotions is an opportunity for you to grow closer to God the Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. As you continue to enjoy each of these devotions, I'd love it if you would share your thoughts and insights in the comment section below. As we begin today's devotion, our scripture is John chapter 18, verse 33 through 40. Take a moment to write it down for a later reflection. After committing for the third time in prayer to drink the cup if no other way existed for it to be empty, Jesus returned to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Rise, let us go. They heard this before. This was a repeat of John 14, 31, get up and get going. Where? Stop number two. A co-worker's betrayal. Judas hadn't gone with the eleven to the garden that night, but he was present for the Last Supper. Matthew, an eyewitness, recorded the interaction between Jesus and Judas at the dinner table. After Jesus told the disciples that one among them would betray him, Judas said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. To which Jesus replied, you have said so. Matthew 26, 21, and 25. Immediately following this exchange, Jesus broke the bread, called it his body, and offered it to the twelve. And Judas ate it. Then Jesus blessed the cup, called it the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Matthew twenty six twenty eight. Passed it to the twelve, and Judas drank from it. John, another eyewitness, adds, As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him, John thirteen twenty seven. Judas had made his deal with the chief priests before the Last Supper. It was his own choice. But as Judas, as Judas led the crowds with their clubs and the soldiers with their swords into the garden, internally he was no longer acting alone. This betrayal was a manifestation of satanic opposition. We expect satanic opposition from the world, but when it comes from around the table, it takes our breath away. For three years, Judas and Jesus walked, talked, and served together. For three years, the eleven trusted Judas with the money bag. Judas saw the same miracles and received the same authority. Judas ate the same bread and drank from the same cup. And now Judas kissed the king with blood money in his hands. In considering this moment, we must resist any tendency to make Jesus a Stoic. Yes, Jesus saw it coming, but knowledge does not numb the soul to pain. Picture Jesus spending hours alone in gut-wrenching prayer, taking breaks only to discover his support team spiritually missing in action. Then, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Matthew twenty six forty seven through 50 Betrayal of this degree is a toxic mixture of rejection, disregard, and narcissism. A betrayer sacrifices someone else for their own gain. As a result, many who have been betrayed experience anger, a sense of worthlessness, self-doubt, and soul-deep pain. Though scripture doesn't disclose Jesus' emotions as he looked into Judas' eyes, we do know with confidence that Jesus understands betrayal. Jesus and Judas's final interaction end with some name-calling. The last name Judas called Jesus was Rabbi. The last thing Jesus called Judas was friend. The Greek word friend used here culturally refers to a colleague, a comrade, a fellow worker, or friend. It appears uh, only three times in the New Testament exclusively in the Gospel of Matthew. In biblical context, the implication is of a distinct relationship in which there is generosity on the one part and abuse of it on the other part, to the point a co-worker's betrayal. Now for today's reflection. Judas's story is a sad one. Some have suggested that he lacked the option of writing a different ending, that he was born a betrayer. Respectfully, 
I disagree, and remain in that messy place theologically where God's sovereignty and human free will coexist. Think of those who once ate at the church's table and then somehow formed an alliance with darkness. What factors may have contributed to their departure? Pray for them, that unlike Judas, they'll find their way back home. Now for today's fast, fast discontentment. Judas held the money bag, the power, and the honored position of being counted among the twelve. Jesus in no way excluded him from ministry or shared authority. Yet somehow it wasn't enough. Judas obviously wanted more or something else, or both. His sense of not having enough led him to steal from the money bag, John twelve six, and fill his personal wallet with 30 silver coins. Even then, he still wasn't satisfied and tried to rewind his actions to no avail. It is as though Judas was plagued with a nagging sense of not-enoughness. One of the fiercest allies of not-enoughness is our imaginations. Today, fast daydreaming of more. Refuse to allow discontentment brain space. Each time you're tempted to picture your life with something else or something new or something different, stop. Yeah, I said it. Stop and redirect your mental energy to thank God for anything in your current reality for which you can be grateful. Well, that ends our time together. Now it's your time to spend with God, and I pray that you feel God's presence as you spend time with Him. If you haven't done so already, won't you please subscribe to our YouTube channel? And as always, I'd love it if you would share today's devotion with any friends or family on any social media platforms you're a member of. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.